Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Annette, also known as Grandma D. Today we are here with another story time. I'm so excited to be able to bring you the next book in our Disney Princess series featuring Jasmine from Aladdin. I know that many of you have seen the movies Aladdin and recognize Jasmine from our book. This story tonight we're going to read is called Birds of a Feather and it's a story about telling the truth. And I hope that you will enjoy this book in our series as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. And I believe that this is book number five in our series, which means that we are halfway through. So before we get started with our book tonight, I just want to say that I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm so happy that you could join me tonight as we read the next story in our series. And I hope that you will have your adult like the channel and like the video and click that notification bell. Then you'll know each time a new story time comes out. I'm so excited. Now I have Toby and Mason here with me tonight. So if you hear dingling around and noises, it's the tinkles on their collars because they're walking around here waiting for me. So without any further ado, we are going to get started and read this wonderful story and learn all about telling the truth. Are you ready? Are y'all comfortable? You have your snack, maybe your favorite drink and you're sitting under a cozy blanket or all stretched out on your bed in front of your computer or your tablet. So let's get started. Jasmine watched the merchant in the purple robe bow to her father, the Sultan. Thank you for the gifts, the Sultan told the man. I hope you enjoy your stay in Agrabah. Ah, but you, but your majesty, we have one more gift for you. The man stepped aside. Behind him was a large object covered with a purple cloth. Hmm. There's Jasmine. There's Aladdin. There, right there is the object under the purple cloth. I wonder what that could be. Oh, I love surprises, the Sultan exclaimed, clapping his hands together. He pulled off the cloth to reveal a golden bird cage with a beautiful bird inside. The Sultan was astonished. Why, this is a most wonderful gift, he said. Yes, agreed Jasmine, looking into the bird's large black eyes. Jasmine felt as if the bird wanted to talk to her. The merchant smiled. These birds, birds are rare in my country and few are ever captured. Oh, there's the little bird. Look how happy the Sultan is. But look at the little bird. He doesn't look very happy, does he? Hmm. Hmm. Jasmine reached inside the cage to touch the bird. Does it sing? She asked. The merchant shook his head. Oops, sorry. That's wood behind me. I have my fireplace going if you can see it. <laughs> it's raining here tonight, so I brought some wood in and thought we would enjoy a fire. The merchant shook his head. It is said that the song of these, the song of these birds brings happiness to all who hear it. But I must tell you the truth, princess. I have never heard this bird sing. Huh, that's interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Soon the merchant left. The Sultan smiled at the bird he loved his new pet. 
Hmm, he murmured. Perhaps if this bird likes living in the palace, it will sing for us. He looked at the bird. We will give you nothing but the finest foods and care, the Sultan promised. Just then Aladdin noticed Abu. Have you been eating the Sultan's gifts, Abu? Abu shook his head while hiding an orange behind his back. No fibs, Aladdin reminded his friend. I'm sorry, Abu ate the fruit, your highness, he added, apologizing to the sultan. Uh-oh, there's Abu hiding an orange behind his back. Do you remember Abu from the movie? Oh, that's quite all right, the sultan said. But I do think your friend needs a bath. A bath? Abu didn't like that idea. He tried to escape by jumping on the sultan's head, but the magic carpet caught him. Abu, the sultan said, wiping the fruit juice from his face. Then he laughed. Now we both need a bath. Oh, that's nice that the sultan had a sense of humor about it. Look at magic carpet grabbing Abu's tail. <laughs> Jasmine watched everyone leave. She turned back to the beautiful bird. It's the strangest thing, she said to the bird. I feel as if you want to say something. She paused, wishing the bird could answer, but it was silent. I hope father is right, Jasmine told the bird. I hope you like living in the palace with us. The princess left leaving the bird alone. Hmm. What do you think? You have any thoughts on that? Days passed. The Sultan was true to his word and tried to make the bird happy. The bird was given the finest foods. The best musicians gave a concert for the bird. The Sultan even took the bird to the camel races. He still doesn't look very happy, does he? Hmm. Hmm. But the bird never sang. Worse, its beautiful tail feathers started to fall out. I wonder if this bird is sick the worried sultan said one day. Perhaps the air is too warm. Jasmine shook her head. I don't think that's it. Aladdin frowned. I wonder if there's a book that would tell us more about this bird. Wonderful idea, my boy, exclaimed the sultan. Let's go to the palace library. There must be some way to help the poor creature. The two hurried off. I wonder if they'll be able to figure out what the problem is. I guess we'll see. Jasmine stood quietly and looked at the bird. Suddenly she knew what was wrong. Just as she had once felt trapped behind the palace walls, the bird felt trapped in its cage. You need to be free, don't you, Jasmine said to the bird. She opened the door of the cage. I hope you can be happy at last. For the first time, the bird's eyes sparkled. Then it quickly flew out of the cage. Oh, look at that. Look how happy he is now. Do you think he'll stay? Father will be so happy to hear the bird isn't sick, Jasmine said, as she watched the bird soar into the sky. I hope he's still in the library. I must tell him the good news. She rushed out of the room to find the sultan. She had no sooner left the room when Abu wandered in. The playful monkey spied the open cage door and began to swing on it. Uh-oh. That can't be good. 
<laughs> See, there's the little bird. He's flew right out the window. Just then, Aladdin and the Sultan returned. Oh, no, cried the Sultan. Abu has let my bird escape. The little monkey's chattering echoed through the halls. What's wrong, Jasmine cried, running up to them. Father, I've been looking for you. I... Not now, my dear, said the Sultan. Now, Abu, I'm sure you didn't mean to let my bird out. If a person had done this, of course, I'd be furious, the Sultan sighed. Please try to be more careful in the future. Uh oh The Sultan was very upset. Jasmine didn't speak up, and he thought Abu did it. Come on, Abu, said Aladdin firmly, carrying the monkey out. We need to go and have a chat about manners. Jasmine looked at her father. Abu wasn't really in trouble, but if she told her father the truth, Jasmine knew she might be. What would a princess do? Hmm. What do you think she's going to do? Any thoughts? Father, began Jasmine. What is it, my dear? He answered. In a hollow voice, he walked slowly over to his throne and sat down. Jasmine took a deep breath. Abu wasn't the one who freed the bird. I did, she said softly. You? asked the sultan. His eyes widened. My own daughter? His eyes filled with tears. Oh, he's so sad. He's so sad. Did you think she would fess up and tell the truth? I know how much you cared about the bird, Jasmine said, but I realized the bird wasn't sick. It was unhappy living in a cage. It needed to be free. Jasmine knelt next to the Sultan. I know that you are angry with me. I'm sorry. The Sultan was quiet for a few minutes. Jasmine's heart beat fast as she waited for her father's reaction. Finally, the sultan walked over and stroked Jasmine's head. Ah, my child, I am not angry with you. I am proud of you. Jasmine looked up surprised. Hmm. It took courage to tell me the truth, and you are right. I want what is best for the bird. The Sultan sighed. Oh, Father, Jasmine cried, leaping up and giving the Sultan a hug. Now I think I should find Abu and apologize, added the Sultan. But then Aladdin and Abu came flying in on magic carpet. Jasmine, your majesty, you've got to hear. I mean, see this, Aladdin shouted. The magic carpet whisked them off to the royal garden. Uh-oh, sounds like a surprise is in store. There, at the top of a tall tree, sat the sultan's bird, looking happier than anyone could imagine. Its wings were outstretched, and its song filled the air. Jasmine listened to its music. It does fill my heart with happiness, she sighed dreamily. The sultan squeezed Jasmine's hand. Then it seemed you both have the same talent, he said proudly. The end. Look at that. Look how happy the bird is. And look how happy Jasmine and her father are. And Abu is happy. Why do you think Abu is happy? Because the truth came out. And they found out what really happened. 
and that he was blamed mistakenly, and that Jasmine, as a princess, she knew she needed to tell the truth. And you know, sometimes when we tell the truth, people are very upset with us and we have to pay consequences for our actions. But those that love us and we tell them the truth, they still love us. They still care. We may have to do penance or pay for our reaction or our action of lying, but you'll feel better in the long run because you know in your heart that you did the right thing. I always used to tell my children, I don't care what you do, how bad it is, what you've done, what you've said, but if you tell me the truth and you're honest with me, I may be angry and you may be punished for your actions, but I will always love you. Nothing will ever change that. And I want you to know that Grandma D loves you very much. Nothing will ever change that. And I hope that you enjoyed our story today. Birds of a Feather, a story about telling the truth. And I hope that you'll come back next time and join me for our next story time, which will be another wonderful and fun book and our next story in our series. So wherever you are in the world, whether you're going to bed at night, waking up in the morning, getting ready for school, whether it's the middle of your day and you're rushing in the door from school to listen to story time, or whether it's a Saturday afternoon and you've got some free time and you know grandma's got a new story time out. I'm sending you warm hugs and butterfly kisses. And I want you to know that Grandma looks forward to our next time together. So until then, Grandma D is saying, I love you, I care about you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.